over the years, RED has come out with a lot of different cameras, and at a certain point, it got really hard to keep track of them all, so I thought I'd put together this little presentation going over the core base models, covering the significant upgrades in both the body styles and the sensor styles. This won't cover every RED camera imaginable. I'll try and point out where there's some variance when possible, but to cover every single model and make would be very, very time consuming and very, very difficult because even though I tried my best to make sure this information is 100% accurate, I'm sure I made mistakes because following this stuff is actually quite challenging because things ship uh, at certain dates, things come and go, and things change nonstop with RED, but that's just the way it is. So let's get into it. The first RED 1 was released in 2007. Now, there were a couple prototype models before that, but 2007 is when they actually started to ship. Most of the dates in this presentation will be ship dates or general ship dates for the mass market rather than a couple prototypes here and there or small batches. Now, the RED 1 was substantial for its uh, offering of 4K and RAW video, which hadn't really been done before. But it is interesting to note that going back you know, to 2007 when this first came out, these specs are on par with what cameras like the GH4 are doing nowadays. Yes, the GH4 doesn't have RAW, but with Vlog L, you get around 11 to 12 stops dynamic range, and you are getting that 4K. And even on the RED 1, it was 4K RAW, so you still had to debayer that and uh, uh, pretty much boiled down to really nice 1080p, but not true 4K as they got into a little bit later. So the RED 1 made some waves, but it wasn't perfect, no camera is, and they had to make some upgrades. And in 2010, they announced the RED 1 MX, which featured the new Mysterium X sensor featuring 13 or over 13 stops of dynamic range, increased resolution, and some better frame rate options, and a significant upgrade overall, and a lot of people really like this upgrade because it fixed a lot of the complaints that people had with the original RED 1 sensor and offered some nice advantages over what they had been dealing with initially. You could buy the RED 1 MX outright, but you could also send your original RED 1 in for an upgrade to the Mysterium X sensor. But the RED 1 was still a big, bulky beast, so they offered the first body upgrade or DSMC, Digital Stills and Motion Cameras. That resulted in the Epic X, which came out around 2011. Now, here's where things start to get a little tricky as they introduce some variant models. There's the Epic X and then the Epic M, which was handmade and had some basically just construction only benefits, supposedly a little bit more rugged and rigid construction compared to the Epic X but for all intents and purposes, they're identical. Now, the Epic X featured a smaller form factor, a little bit more compact, a little bit more mobile and easy to carry around compared to the original Red One, but it still featured the Mysterium X sensor. But they did add in a few nice features as going to 5K on the Epic X compared to the 4.5K, which the Red One MX topped out at. In 2012, they introduced the Scarlet X, the little brother to the Epic X, basically using the exact same sensor, although not as high quality sensors, basically some sensors that didn't pass the quality control for the Epic cameras. So they used these sensors in the Scarlet X cameras, and the Scarlet X was hampered by some not as powerful processing, which made the frame rate and resolution options a little bit more limited. So you couldn't do quite as high resolution and quite as high frame rate with the Scarlet X as you could with the Epic X. However, the Scarlet X was substantially cheaper than the Epic X when it first came out. The Epic and Scarlet were huge steps forward for RED as a camera company and really solidified them as professional filmmaking equipment. But the Mysterium X started to show its age, and so RED started working on the Dragon sensor upgrade. And in 2014, the Epic Dragon started to ship. Again, these dates may not be exact. You know, there might be some overlap from year to year due to initial batches of customers getting it early and then other people having to wait a little bit longer. 
but for the most part, it was around 2014 when the Epic Dragon started to ship. And this featured an increased dynamic range up to 16.5 plus stops, depending on what you're doing and increased resolution and frame rate options, a whole substantial upgrade with the Dragon sensor. Later in 2014 and into 2015, the Scarlet Dragon started to ship. Again, similar situation where the Scarlet is the little brother. You get the nicer sensor with the increased resolution and dynamic range, but you are limited with the resolution and the frame rates. The 6K version of the Scarlet Dragon, recording 6K on the Scarlet Dragon rather, you couldn't even record up to 24 frames a second. You can only record, I think it's 18 frames per second. So the 6K mode is essentially meaningless unless you're trying to do some kind of time lapse or photo mode. Really, you're topping out around 5K on the Scarlet Dragon, even though it can technically go to 6K. So now that Red had the Dragon sensor upgrade, it was time to do the second body upgrade or DSMC2. And this is where we start to catch up to present day with the Weapon 6K shipping in 2016. Now, this features the Dragon sensor, so it's still the same resolution, same dynamic range, but the body and electronics have been modified and upgraded over the older Epic and Scarlet body style. Red is also introduced and announced the Scarlet W, which features some redesign of the components, the hardware components. And this is where I got some conflicting information because they say that these started shipping in February of 2016. But if you go to the Red website currently, it's still taking pre-orders for the Scarlet W. So I don't know if they did a batch and then they pulled it back or, or what's going on. But there are some of these out there, but they are not readily available. And this is the same deal where it's using that Dragon sensor, but the hardware is the upgraded newer weapon DSMC2 hardware. And at this point, Red has introduced or announced the Red Raven, which is an even littler brother, maybe the second cousin or something of the Scarlet. A cheaper, more affordable, but even more limited version of the Red cameras. The Red Raven, it's the affordable RED camera that will give you 4.5K raw recording, obviously like all RED cameras, and it gives you that 16.5 stops of dynamic range that you get with the Dragon sensor, but the resolution and frame rates are limited compared to the Epic and Scarlet models. These haven't started shipping yet. They say that they were are expected to ship in like 2017 or so, We'll see. Stuff always changes with red, so there's no guarantee. So right now it's just to be determined, but they are taking pre-orders for these. Red has also announced an 8K version of the weapon with a VistaVision size sensor. Shipping on this is to be determined. You can't even put a pre-order in on their site, currently on their public-facing store. And there isn't a lot of specs floating around. This was an announced at NAB last year that this would be coming, but it hasn't started shipping Yet, we'll see how it all pans out, but Red has basically offered this sensor over to Panavision, and it's being included in a Panavision DXL camera, also featuring all the benefits of 8K, RAW, all that stuff you get with Red. So they're starting to branch out and put this technology in, in other cameras from other manufacturers and having these kind of partnerships. So it's getting really complicated to keep track of all this stuff, all these models have different variants for the M version, the carbon fiber version, and even with the carbon fiber, fiber version, there's different models with that, all associated with different pricing. Basically, it just kind of boils down to the weight of the camera and also the durability of the camera is what you're getting for that additional payment and the badge or bragging rights to say that you have the more expensive version. On the near horizon, there is a possible third sensor upgrade that they've started to hint at, currently being referred to as Helium, which is possibly a new sensor technology or just a variant of the Dragon sensor technology. Jared from Red has just started talking about this on Facebook as well as posting some stuff over on Red User. And essentially, they've made some custom cameras for Michael Bay, codenamed Bayhem. And these are weapon body style, but helium sensor, and it's basically an 8K sensor. So similar 
to the other Weapon 8K VistaVision sensor, but this 8K sensor is Super 35. Sensor having the same amount of pixels, but being a slightly smaller size so that lens coverage is more common with Super 35 lenses compared to the larger VistaVision sensor in the VistaVision 8K weapon. Really confusing, really hard to keep track of it all, but Helium is on the horizon and it might just be the Super 35 size of that 8K sensor, but who knows, it's possible that there's an Epic W coming at some point, but from here on out, it's pretty hazy at best to figure out what's coming and what's going. So as a general overview, the Red One shipped in 2007, the Red One MX upgrade came in 2010, then the Epic X started shipping in 2011 with the Scarlet X soon after in 2012. Then came the Epic Dragon upgrade in 2014, along with the Scarlet Dragon in 2014, around 2015, right on that, bridging that gap there from year to year. Then the Weapon 6K started shipping in 2016, along with the Scarlet W also in 2016. And soon we will start to see the Red Raven make its way out to the public, hopefully soon, possibly in 2017. And then we've got the Weapon 8K VistaVision as well as the Weapon Helium 8K Super 35 version on the horizon. We'll see how it goes. Keeping track of this is not easy. I fell off somewhere around the Dragon up upgrade just because I got sick of all the constant waiting and over-promising and then changing specs and changing prices with the RED cameras. But... They are really good cameras if you have the money to put down for them. Most of the time, I would say just go ahead and rent something like this unless you can really make it worth your while to invest in a system like this. They do offer some nice upgrade policies over there at RED. So if you buy into their camera system, their camera ecosystem, you can get some upgrades, but it still is a very expensive long-term endeavor so most of the time, I think you're pretty good just sticking with a rental. But hopefully, this paints a nice picture of what you might want to rent. Obviously, the older stuff is a little bit cheaper to get a hold of nowadays, and the newer stuff is incredibly expensive. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a camera.